Good morning, everyone. It is Jocelyn with Musically Minded and Circle Time Success. And today I am here to share with you some fun name games. I know lots of schools are starting and if they haven't already started, they're starting in the next week or two. And I just want to really highlight why it is so important that we do name games with kids. So let's first start about talking about the community aspect of it. So really to feel a part of a community means that you know that you're recognized. You know that you're a valuable member of it. And one of the best ways to know that is to know that people know your names. So today I'll share with you some fun name games to have that happening throughout really any time. It doesn't have to even be when a new group comes together. It could be, you know, in a month or two, or maybe you do what, do a name game every week or maybe every time you do circle. The other important piece is that it's really an individual's way of feeling like they're recognized, that they are seen. And if anything we know people want to know that they are seen now dale carnegie has a great quote and he was man a man of his time because he was ahead of his time the words that he shares still are relevant today so let me just read that quote to you a person's name to him or her is the sweetest and most important sound in any language it's a big deal just think about you when you see someone and they call you by your first name think about how that makes you feel especially if you haven't seen someone for a while it's so important as teachers to recognize how we feel about things things that make us feel good and then remember kids like that too hi brenda thanks for joining me this morning for these fun name games so i'm going to go through six name games now as we go through these feel free to ask me any questions or if you're watching the replay just jump in and ask those questions and i'll be sure to answer those but you can always direct message me as well so remember that you can actually get a copy of all of these lyrics in the post, you'll see the link to download the songs. Now, if you're on my email list on Sunday, you got this email about name games, but I added a couple more because, you know, I always like to add some extra. So we're gonna start with one called Higgledy Piggledy Bumblebee. Now this one can either be spoken or sung. And so I just wanna say out there to anybody who's like, Jocelyn, there is no way I'm singing outside my car don't worry it's something that you're going to start to get used to and when you start to see the benefits of it you're going to forget how you sound and really focus more on how much fun you're having so let me first start with doing it as a spoken poem it goes like this higgledy piggledy bumblebee can you say your name for me and at that point what i i've done before is i maybe tossed a beanbag to a child and they'll say their name um I have had um, a bumblebee and actually put a bumblebee on maybe somebody's hand and that maybe is a way for them to know it's their turn to say their name. But remember that we have kiddos who aren't quite ready to maybe say their name. Maybe they're one year old or maybe they're not ready to talk in public and that's fine. We do not want to force them to do it. That's never a good way to do it. So you might say, Higgledy Piggledy Bumblebee, where oh where can Katie be? Now you're saying the name and not having the child have to feel uncomfortable. So really read that nonverbal, that body language, because that nonverbal communication is what you are really trying to connect with. By doing that, by reading it, and by really listening to it, you are honoring that child. So pay attention to that. Now, as your kids get into the year and they're starting to recognize their own name, go ahead and make little name cards and do something like this. Higgledy Piggledy Bumblebee, whose name do you see? And or whose name can this be? So lots of different ways to rhyme on that. And then maybe you should hold up, hold up, um, hold up the card and see if either the child or maybe the whole class together can come up with that child's name. We can, you know, really focus on that beginning letter sound to help them sound it up to figure out who could it be. All right, so that's Higgledy Piggledy Bumblebee. And um, if you have babies or toddlers, you can even take scarves and have them hide underneath it. And then Higgledy Piggledy Bumblebee, where oh where can Susie be? And with that one, 
then you pull the scarf up and say, oh, there you are. So that's a fun little variation if you have some younger ones. All right, the next one is called Johnny Whoops. And I learned this a long time ago. Babies love it because they love to have their hands touched. And it's great though for fine motor skills, even on older kids. It really has to have them really focusing on their fingers as they say this little poem. So we're gonna try it. You're gonna take your hand like this and you're gonna touch every fingertip until you, right after the pointer, you're gonna slide, touch, slide, Touch, 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 touch. All right, so we're gonna start on the pinky. So let's do Johnny. Johnny, 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 whoops. Johnny, whoops. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Now with this one, remember, don't forget that thumb. Otherwise you kind of get thrown off. Now we're gonna customize it. I know I did a video a while ago about how important it is to really always make sure that not everything is on a recording or on a YouTube video because you want to customize it. And name games are a big way that you want to customize. You can't have a recording with other kids' names on it. You want to make it about your group. So let's do um, Macy, my daughter. Macy, 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 whoops, Macy, whoops, Macy, 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 Macy. Macy. Now, another thing to keep in mind, as adults, we can talk really fast. We can sing really fast. But little ones do not have that vocal mechanism, that muscle developed as, uh, you know, as much as you. So I encourage you to slow it down. So I'm doing it pretty fast. But keep that in mind. If you want them to do it along with you and gain those benefits of saying, doing, participating, you want to slow it down. So it's Susie, Susie. Susie, Susie, whoops, Susie, whoops, Susie, 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 Susie. You might even want to write a note to yourself. When you're doing things a cappella, saying poems, make sure to slow them down so your little ones can join in. All right, next one, I have to get my elephant out. Now this, I found a Raffi recording of this song because I wanted, in case you hadn't heard it, to make sure and know how it goes. So if you want, when you download the um, all of these lyrics, again, in the post, you can, um, there's a link there to click and listen to the Raffi version. Hey, if you know if this truly is Raffi, let me know. Um, but I don't know if you just, he just did a remake of it. All right, so this one goes like this. Willoughby, wallaby, wee, an elephant sat on me. Willoughby, wallaby, woo, an elephant sat on you. So what we're going to be doing in this one is to really play with that first sound in a word. I want them to really focus on it because that's how we're going to figure out whose name I'm talking about. So here we go. Willoughby, wallaby, wassailin, an elephant sat on Jocelyn. Willoughby, wallaby, Brenda, an elephant sat on Brenda. Okay, so at the beginning of the year, as kids don't really know everybody's names, be sure to show them how this poem works, this song works. But then as they also start to get to know everybody's names and they get really good with rhyming and changing that first sound in a word and playing with that, with those words, they're going to be able to do something like this. Willoughby, wallaby, winda, an elephant sat on. And you're going to wait. Who did an elephant sat on? sit on? Winda. Who in our room is Winda? Linda. And then that will help them to start to realize how the game works. But you've had all these experiences with it, so they should know how it goes. Hey, parents out there, this is great for in your car, driving home, working on that rhyming. This, this really, this pho phonemic awareness, being able to manipulate words like this is one of those foundational pieces we need to get kids ready to eventually read. So that's Willoughby Wallaby Woo. And I just have the elephant just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. All right, the next one up on our agenda is who is here today? Now this is a musically minded original, but it's to the tune of the farmer in the dell. And so it goes like this. Who is here today? Who is here today? Who is here? Oh, who 
is here? Oh, who is here today? Now, with this one, you, depending on the size of your classroom, you can go around and say one child per verse, or you could say three names. So here's what I mean. Let's say you have a small class. Let's say you have six kids. I'm going to go, um, Jocelyn's here today. Jocelyn's here today. Jocelyn's here. Let's give a cheer because Jocelyn's here today. Woo! Okay. So if you have a small class, that works. If you have a big class, do not do this. Activities that last too long and are not engaging towards the end of the activity is an instant way for kids to lose attention. So I really emphasize, make sure that you fit this into the group that you have. If you have a big group, here's what you're going to do. Let's do that beginning part again. Who is here today? Who is here today? Who is here? Oh, who is here? Who is here today? We're going to go around and we're going to say three names. So Brenda's here today. Susie's here today. Johnny's here. Let's give a cheer. Our friends are here today. Woohoo! So in that one verse, I got three names done. So if I have 20 kids, it's not going to take me that long if I nail three names every single time. So that's who is here today. Again, download the notes. All of these songs are available for you in the post. So just go ahead and download those. And by doing that, you're going to be able to click on it and hear the recording so you can hear how the tune goes but you won't want to use the recording because the recording has kids' names that are probably not in your class. All right, next one is called Jack Be Nimble. Now, we know this is a fun nursery rhyme, poem, rhyme, whatever you want to call it that's been around forever, but we're going to add a little twist to it. So here's my um, eyeglass spray. Um, you can use anything that is little that stands up tall to put in the middle of the circle to show your candlestick. But you might actually, because of background knowledge is so important, show a picture or even bring in a candlestick, if you have one, to show kids what that means. Because if they don't know what a candlestick is, we, we lose that opportunity to make that word be a vocabulary word they can bank with meaning. So bring a, bring a candlestick, bring a picture of a candlestick. The candlestick, real deal, is even better. And then have them even pass it around so they can see what a candlestick is um, all about. Hey, talk about fire, see where, the, see where the conversation goes. But we're talking about Jack Be Nimble. So I'm gonna put this in the center of the circle and I'm going to say a child's name and then I'm going to tell them what I want them to do. So it goes like this. Um, Jenny be nimble, Jenny be quick, Jenny jump over the candlestick. Now Jenny stands up from her spot, she jumps over the candlestick and she finds her spot again. Now I go to the next one. I might say, um, um, David be nimble, David be quick, David go around the candlestick. Now David stands up and David walks around the candlestick. Now if your kiddos don't know those prepositions, you know, over and around, now is the time before you even do the activity to talk about it so they know what that means. I'm going to tell you that learning words like that with actually using the body as well is going to be way more meaningful and it's going to last. They are going to be able to know what that means when we use our body. And that's really why I recommend that you use the body to learn as much as possible. Just listening. It doesn't go into enough places in the brain to lock it in. And it also might not be the way that your learner learns. I know that when we learn multi-sensory, multi we're really helping so many kids to be able to understand concepts, no matter their favorite learning style. All right, the last one is a Lori Berkner favorite. And for this one, it's interesting. It's called Pig on Her Head. And I think it's so cute and lots of fun lyrics to it. <clears throat> and you can, you can customize it in lots of different ways. But I have had a heck of a time remembering the tune. <laughs> so for this one, I am going to use a ukulele. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you permission right now. You find a tune that works for you. For me, if I have a um, song that is set to a tune I know, then it makes me feel so much better, unless I really know the tune well. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, 
You're right, Katie Jones. I see. I see. I forget. I hear. I remember. I do understand. That is so true. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Because that, I mean, and the thing about it is I always laugh because toddlers know exactly how they need to learn. They are right in there grabbing it, touching it, you know, getting their whole body into it. Um, but as the older kids become, um, you know, socially, you know, appropriate, they know that they have to sit back, but their learning still does happen with their hands and being involved. So get them involved. Okay. So this um, pig on her head, I'm going to sing it. When you get the download, you're going to be able to click on it and go to Lori's version of it. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do my best with the version that I do. Lori's got a pig on her head. Lori's got a pig on her head. Lori's got a pig on her head and she keeps it there all day. All right. So I think you can probably already see that this opens up so many doors to uh, really spice it up with some variations. So we're going to change the person's name. And if you want, I got a pig here today. And so I really could put someone's a pig on someone's head. But you could use anything. You could use any stuffed animal that you have that's small. Maybe um, Susie has a cat on her head. Susie has a cat on her head. Susie has a cat on her head. And she keeps it there all day. But you could also pass around this item and have the child decide where they want to put it. So let's see. All right, the next person gets it. Oh, your name is Natia. My other daughter and Natia, where is the pig gonna be for you? And now you've got choice going, okay? So it's not being dictated. Kids love choice. So, oh, Natia says, Oh, on her knee, okay? Natia's got a pig on her knee, Natia's got a pig on her knee, Natia's got a pig on her knee, and she keeps it there all day. So, so many different ways that you can spice this up. It's just such a cute little song with lots of variations. But notice I did play the ukulele with it. So if you have taken my ukulele class, then you're going to have the chords to that and you can learn it and teach it to kiddos. If you have not taken my ukulele class, it is one amazing way to get your kids engaged at circle time. And you will not believe how fast you can learn to play the ukulele. So um, make sure that you, um, let's see. There's, oh, Brenda says she loves this one, working on Circle Times Fun. Hey, good. I'm glad it can help you. All right. So this one, like I said, is on the ukulele, but I want to also tell you that it works to London Bridges Falling Down. So remember how I was telling you that I couldn't quite get the tune? It's like this. Lori's got a pig on her head, a pig on her head, a pig on her head. Lori's got a pig on her head and she keeps it there all day. All right. So another fun way to, to mix it up would just be that London Bridge. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I am heading out for um, working on a training for tomorrow. I'm so excited to get out there and do a circle time training with a local school. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Be sure if you are watching this video later, just let me know, ask any questions, like anything that um, you see, and I will be back next week with another circle time idea. Bye-bye.